Hello everyone, Vin Ebenu here at Southern Regional Middle School for the first episode of Eyes on the Jersey Shore. It follows up episodes of Ask the Chief, Ask the Mayor, and other interviews with local leaders at the Jersey Shore discussing important events and happenings. I'm here with Ocean County Public Health Coordinator Dan Regney about the latest updates on the COVID-19 vaccination process, the demand for appointments for vaccines. Dan, there's been a lot going on. You know, when we were talking last year, it was about, okay, what's happening with the virus? What do people need to know? What do people need to do? So fortunately, we're at a point here early in 2021 where vaccines are available and more are on the way. A couple more are on the way. But as we go from phase 1A to phase 1B, soon 1C, on to 2, and so on and so forth, there's vaccines coming to the state, but it doesn't seem like there's enough to go around from the state. And while state and federal government officials play a game of, you know, pointing fingers about who's to blame here, I think the fact of the matter is, is that there's just not enough supply to meet the demand for vaccinations or for appointments, as you saw firsthand last week when 10,000 people within a few minutes, 100,000 people over the course of a couple days in Ocean County trying to book appointments to get the vaccine. So just in the last week alone, it's it's been somewhat of a circus. So how have you dealt with a lot of the challenges in regards to getting enough of the vaccine to give out and then dealing with the appointments? Right. Yeah, so right now we're, we're excited to be at this point of our uh, response here within Ocean County. It's uh, We're almost a year into it at this point. Uh, we've conducted 19 clinics so far, vaccinated over 8,000 people um, at the clinics. Um, the vaccine, obviously, we can... we just keep getting more we'll keep going uh, moving forward uh the two main pieces it's the staffing and it's the the vaccine itself uh we have plenty of great relationships we have 100 plus sites uh, throughout the county uh that we can easily open up if we can just get the uh, the staffing and the vaccine uh, in hand to be able to do so uh, we continue our model of looking at a centralized uh process uh which we've been at tom server high school north for the last month uh, today we're beginning to expand some of that to more of that community-based model that we've been talking about uh, to be able to get the vaccine to different ge- uh, geographic areas of the county uh, to be able to make sure everybody has an opportunity uh, to get the vaccine um, as close to home as possible. Um, last week when the uh, the restrictions were opened up to 65 and over and folks with underlying and chronic health conditions, uh, we had about 25,000 appointments that were booked um, almost instantaneously off of our website. Uh, we had a couple hundred thousand and people hit our website uh, from the point of one o'clock last Wednesday afternoon through the evening. Uh, so it was a um, technology wise, it was a, a stress on our, our system, I would say, and I don't think we're alone with that. Um, we are opening up, continuing to open up those appointments um, and they book up pretty quickly. Um, so we, I would just recommend to the residents as they go onto our website, if there's nothing available uh, to keep checking back on a daily basis or a couple times a day uh, because we do look to continue to open up vaccine as we can also increase staffing at some of the locations. What might be full today for one site might open up for that site tomorrow. Uh, with that, um, just because we can get an extra nurse or two to, to get another vaccination station, um, or we got more vaccine in to be able to open that up. So we are um, looking at every clinic in real time to be able to see what we can do, what we can't do, and uh, to be able to meet that need that's out there right now. So is it more of a challenge in, in uh, being able to provide appointments just with not having enough doses of the vaccine at this point, or just enough sites or enough people at work and at those sites to be able to uh, distribute the vaccine. Right. I think it's a combination of both. Right now, I think if the the biggest um, or the weakest link, I should say, would be the vaccine supply. We have um, a lot of uh, opportunities and staffing to be able to operate a, a large scale clinic. Uh, for example, yesterday at I High School North, uh, we were hoping to put between 2,000 and 2,500 people through, uh, but we had to scale that back on the appointment side, um, and we only did about 1,200. I mean, I say only that that's a that's a huge task, uh, but we were looking for double uh, that. Um, and if we had the vaccine, we could have put 2,000 plus uh, through that, that clinic site yesterday. So we had the staff in place. Um, there were heavy periods. There were slow periods. But I think it went very well um, overall. So I think the, the biggest need right now will be on the vaccine side. You know, as of Tuesday morning here, about 366,000 doses of the vaccine have been distributed across the state. About 325 first doses, another 40,000 plus in, in second doses here. And that's, I think, about half of what the state actually has in terms of vaccinations do you is there a struggle between what the state 
is saying and what they're providing in terms of how many vaccines to the local level, to the county level? Well, I mean, one of the challenges, I think, at the, at the state level, and we, we certainly understand this, is that there's multiple sites that are opening up every day, every week. Um, the, the number of vaccination sites are opening up. So they're trying to get that vaccine out to all those sites. We understand that. Um, and, and I think they've been good to us in terms of getting us as much vaccine as they possibly could. Um, I think they've seen that we're able to um, hit the ground running. Uh, we received the vaccine, our first shipment, on December 23rd, about 1030 in the morning. Less than 24 hours later, we had our first clinic vaccine vaccinating our public health nurses and, and some of the frontline workers that were, are working at the COVID testing site and also the vaccination site. So we, we started very aggressively, very fast um, out of the gate to, uh, to be able to get that vaccine uh, into people's arms. Do you see at any point, either in the short term or at some point in the next few months, another vaccination site opening up like the one here at Southern Regional Middle School or the one at the RWJ Barnabas Health Arena in Tom's River? Uh, definitely. As we continue to get more vaccine and more staffing on board, um, I definitely see this more of a community-based model continuing to get that out into the community, um, hitting all geographic locations within the county, uh, really mirroring what we do with our seasonal flu program, uh, that we have probably close to 100 sites throughout the county uh, that we hit within a month, month and a half uh, for that. So I, I see us moving in that direction. Um, the process will be a little bit differently uh, set up with that with appointments and, and obviously clinic fl uh, flow is different, uh, but we're definitely looking to expand into more of a community-based model. The senior communities are of high concern for us. Uh, we're working with the Ocean County Senior Services, um, who's been surveying that the senior communities to uh, look for uh, interest in, in coming in. Um, that interest has been very good, and, and we're very thankful that there is a lot of demand out there for the vaccine. Um, so that's the positive. A lot of people want it. We just need to be able to meet that, that demand at this point. And, and that kind of brings me to a point to follow up on that. Last week, the Ocean County 10th District Legislators, Senator Holzaffel and Assemblyman McGuckin and Catalano, sent a letter to the governor kind of to that point about providing vaccines to senior communities in par for many seniors who can't find a way to get to physically an appointment or just are kind of hesitant about leaving their house to go and get the vaccine for a variety of different reasons. So if if it's possible, would you be able to or would the health department be able to to go to the 91 senior communities in Ocean County and and help the 200,000 senior citizens overall across the county in getting that vaccine if they want it and in in a place where they feel comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. That that is certainly our goal to be able to get to that point where we're able to uh, get into each of the uh, the senior communities that that want us to come in to to, to provide that vaccination. Uh, we've been working with, like I said, the, the Office of Senior Services and surveying the staff, and uh, we'll be touching base with um, Marie LaFace over at the Senior Services to, to find out the results of that survey and uh, continue our planning uh, to be able to meet that need uh, for those communities. But we've already started rolling that out and, and looking at at laying the foundation, the framework. Uh, to be able to move ahead with that at this point. So, so moving forward, would it be, uh, what do you need from maybe from the community or or from the state uh, on that front in terms of looking now for volunteers, either for nurses, people who can give out the shot, um, additional help setting up locations, uh, getting more vaccines from the state to be able to give out in in a way to meet the demand for appointments for people who want to get the vaccine and uh, once it's available, as opposed to waiting maybe until the summer to to be able to get vaccinated. I mean, from the the, the state perspective, and they have their hands tied. I, I understand that. So the vaccine, obviously, um, we we would certainly want um, as soon as possible. Um, from the residents of Ocean County, I would say just a little bit of patience. I know they they've had a long, um, hard uh, year uh, this past year. Um, there will be plenty of vaccination opportunities. Um, we are getting probably hundreds of phone calls, hundreds of emails every day. Um, we are doing our best to, to call all those uh, folks back and respond to all those emails. Um, I know they're, they're frustrated with the registration, with the, um, the, the clinics that are set up. Um, there will be plenty of opportunity. As long as there is a, uh, a demand for the vaccine and vaccine supply, we will be doing these um, until that, that demand goes away. Do you need any additional volunteers at any of the vaccination sites or people that could help with your office's efforts in distributing the vaccine and still providing, certainly providing COVID tests to anybody who is looking for one as well? Uh, right now, I think we're, we could always use some, some more hands on deck. Um, what we're seeing in the beginning, and a lot of times when you look at an emergency and things going on of that nature, you have a lot of people coming out willing to help. Um, what I would just ask if they're interested and serious in, in assisting us, we need people who can dedicate a few days a week at minimum of two to three days um, with a full shift. Uh, we've had a lot of people that, that want to come out. They want to give us two hours 
hours on a Saturday, and we really do appreciate that. Um, but from a scheduling perspective and the time investment for those volunteers and managing them, uh, we need to kind of just be able to, to get a schedule of a, of a core pool of individuals and uh, be able to plug them into the, the, the different needs that we have with as an agency. Um, on the clinical side as well, we need both the, the nurses and the vaccinators, and there's more, more than just nurses uh, that can vaccine, uh, vaccinate uh, in the state of New Jersey. Um, and also on the non-clinical side, we do have the Medical Reserve Corps. We have the CERT program that's been assisting us. Uh, that's been a huge help as well. And um, we're, we're continuing to plow ahead and, and craft the plan as we move ahead. But uh, we have a really good foundation, and everything that you've seen in place and in action is really the, the modification of plans that have been placed, quite honestly, for more than two decades uh, to be able to get to this point. And uh, every year we, we kind of implement our plans um, on our seasonal flu program. Um, a lot of what you see going on at our COVID uh, vaccination sites are from after actions and lessons learned from from uh, uh, H1N1 in uh, in 2009. So it's uh, we're a learning organization, so we continue to learn from our day to day experiences, and I think it's going extremely well uh, with what we've done so far. I mean, certainly a lot of challenges, a lot of hurdles to overcome in the days, weeks, and months ahead. Here, patients certainly key in in looking for an appointment, trying to get the vaccine. Is there anything else that? people in Ocean County need to know uh, about getting the vaccine, scheduling a vaccine, waiting it out, what symptoms qualify to get the vaccine at this point, what they need to know, what they need to spread on. Right. If anybody has any symptoms or is ill, um, they would probably not be vaccinated because that would be a contraindication with, with an active illness. So uh, if they have questions on the vaccine itself, um, probably wherever their medical home is, their, their primary care physician, um, if they're part of a federally qualified health center, speak to them and, and um, get that assistance in the, in the green light. If somebody has an allergy that they have a question on, uh, we'll have staff obviously on site with nurses and, and physicians uh, to be able to answer any of those questions. Um, but it could help them in the long run too. To, uh, to be able to get those answers in advance. And, and last question about the site we're at today, it's Southern Regional Middle School, is part-time, so Tuesdays and Saturdays, what are the times where do people sign up here in Southern Ocean? Right, so what we have um, in our, our long-term planning about three weeks ago, um, we reduced the testing site at Ocean County College by two days, Tuesdays and Saturdays, but we beefed up the number of appointments on the other four days. So we're testing the same number of people uh, each day. It's just four days instead of six. So the nurses that were scheduled to work on those Tuesdays and Saturdays are allowing us to be able to open up sites like this today uh, from a staffing side of that. Um, the registration would be through our website at www.ochd.org. Um, and I would just encourage residents to go back and check uh, frequently because the point do open up uh, for that. Dan, thanks as always for the time. I know there's a lot going on here. I know you're a very busy man. I appreciate you taking out some time to relay some important information to people here in Ocean County about right. testing and certainly about the vaccine. Right. Thank you for having me. That's Ocean County Public Health Coordinator Dan Regney here at Southern Regional Middle School. A new vaccination being set up for anybody who wants to get the COVID vaccine in the days, weeks, and months ahead. Pay attention to the Ocean County Health Department on Facebook and on their website for all the latest information you need to know. And again, a lot of people want that vaccine, but just be patient, right? It's a, it is a virtue. I'm Vin Avenue here again with Ocean County Public Health Coordinator Dan Regney for an episode of Eyes on the Jersey Shore. Stay safe, stay healthy, and smile a little bit.